you want me to do a recap on the problem space? Yeah. So I'm yeah. going to record the audio, if that's OK with everyone, just so that we've got sure. um, a, a recording of what we talk about. Hopefully it will work. <laughs> we find the composer presentation because the, the, issue, the particular issue is in there. Um, here, this is the, the problem that I have right now with the the branch. And so um, just to give you a recap, the plugins itself. So if we take a look at the plugin of, uh, for example, the Grips.js, um, they have to define which PHP version that they're compatible with, and they have to define which Mautic version that they're compatible with. Um, anything for, which is mentioned here, um, could either be a development version or stable version. That's up to the main project to decide. Um, but it needs to be at the bare minimum four. Now, um, if we take a look at, uh, if we include core lib and we include the development version, there's no such thing as four in that name. Um, and that's because of the whole semantic versioning um, problem space. So I need to disguise this development version as four, because otherwise it gives me the error that all these plugins are not compatible uh, because the requirement to have at the bare minimum Mautic 4 uh, was not uh, fulfilled. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. so it, it's seeing it as features and saying features does not equal greater than 4. Is that yeah, so, in um, layman's you, terms? Yeah. Yeah, the hard code, like the, the dependency of Mautic 4 was not fulfilled, so therefore yeah. Composer says no. And so there because you've I did written. this. Dev, uh, dev dash features as 4.0. Yes, and, and then, then suddenly says, it's magic and it says, yeah. okay, you fulfilled that requirement. Yeah. Um, but if I uh, if we go into production and we tag Mautic 4, um, sure, then we will have, I suppose, 4.0. And for stable versions, this works. But for development version, it doesn't work. And this doesn't... doesn't work. Oh, echo, echo, echo. Test, test. Okay. That, that doesn't seem like a really sane approach and, and like a trap to fall into, making this more complex than it should be. And so if we have a branch which could be called 4.xdev, then that would already be okay. And then everything here could be called 4.xdev. And it like kind of made sense or makes sense that it's Mautic 4, the development version. So just reading it already, the branch, make sense or more sense than reading the features branch. Before Logic, I've never heard of um, a, an open source project that uses features as the main development branch. Mm -hmm. Master, sure, main, sure, but not features. Um, and ideally, I think, and that's my suggestion or the discussion that we should have here, do you want to go into the 4.x branch strategy? Do you want to go into 4.0.x branch strategy? Do you want to keep features as the name? Um, and I think, and that's something we need to look into, um, what's the best practice in terms of uh, semantic versioning? Yeah. And, I, yeah. and that's something that um, I didn't do a lot research into yet, as in like, mm -hmm. what's the, the actual best practice? Mm -hmm. But I'm quite sure that features is not one of them. Yeah, yeah. so I can so, talk to talk like to the, the background. background. Um, Rahul, have you got sound Sorry. coming out? So, oh, okay. Um, I could just hear a bit of an echo. So the reason it was called features is because of our release cadence, right? And the reason we're in this situation is because we need to be able to work in parallel on a minor release and a patch release at the same time, and maybe even a major release. And so the reason it's called features rather than main staging is because what we wanted is that anytime we're working on a minor release, that would go into the, the main branch, which is called features, because it's always a features release when you are doing stuff on the features branch. And then anytime, anytime we're working on a minor release, uh, sorry, a patch release, like a bug fix, then that would go against the versioned branch. So 3.1, 3.2, 3.3. 3. 
So basically then anytime we make a release, like a minor release, three point, say we were doing 3.4, that would come from the features branch. And then when we do the release, we would make the 3.4 branch and then all the minor release, all the patch releases will come off of the 3.4 branch. We can start working on 3.5 in the features branch. So that's where the naming strategy and where the branches have come from in that respect. Did you at that time consider um, tree.x and tree.0 as a branch? At some point we had those branches, but nobody really knew what they were for. Nobody used them and they just got out of use. So we did used to have a 2.x and a 3.x branch, but they weren't being updated. So does that make sense? Um, well, yeah, obviously I don't have um, classes into the past uh, as I don't know how it was used or what was confusing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, I think the, the only issue that I have right now is that Composer doesn't recognize features as a valid mm -hmm. version. And it's tricky to say uh, that that version is four or five or like what is it even? Yeah. At the moment that you go into Mautic 5, is it still Mautic 4? Yeah. And well, the where do you make that line? Be the development branch for the next minor release or major release, depending on where we are in the cycle. And what is exactly the, the big problem if you um, would rename the features branch to uh, v4.x or 4.x? and only have pull requests that have named branches, which could be fine, and that, that's either on the responsibility of the people making the pull request, but against the major version. Um, just so that I understand what the problem was or is. So I think if, that, if the main branch was called 4.x, what would you be using that main branch for? or all new features until you open up the 5.x branch and um, you would have to backport into the 4.x uh, all features that you think should go in there. But ideally um, you do a feature stop or uh, some kind of like stop the train of Matic 4 the moment you open up the 5.x branch and only bug fixes uh, go into both branches for a period of maybe six months. Um, which yeah. at that point you actually have two versions and um, what you could do, and that's purely a community thing, um, you only accept for 5.x and then you request uh, at the, the person that makes the pull, please also backport this to 4.x and you leave it up to the community to backport it. And as soon as there's a new pull request for 4.x, you approve it. Um, yeah. I, I don't so think I you think... need to take the work on yourself yeah. Um, to backboard all those issues. So what I understand from what you're saying is rename features to whatever the current major release is, dot .x. Have branches for the major release, dot .minor release, uh, and or major release, dot .minor release, dot .patch release. Would they be their own, each have to have their own branches? Yeah. That's the, um, the good question. Huh? How deep do you want to go down the rabbit hole in terms of minor versions? Um, you could go into 4.0.x and that's the development branch for Mautic 4.0. Um, and you could open up a 4.1.x branch. Um, and that's where maybe the new bugs or features go in, but that gets a little tricky to maintain. Um, you could go yeah. also into, um, the, not really stop the train, but the always moving release train. Everything goes into 4.x and you decide every six months, this is 4.1, this is 4.2. And there is no waiting for a feature to release Mautic 4.1 or Mautic 4.2. It's just a point in time and it's a static point in time. It's always that date. And if it's not ready by then, it is not in that version. Mm -hmm. And bug fixes and, and all those things, like they don't get backported to previous minor versions, it's just, this is the new cadence um, 
and in that way, you don't have to maintain multiple branches. It's just you tag on a specific date for that one. Yeah. Six months later, four dot two. I think what would work best from the development and the code perspective, from what I've seen over the last year, is if we had. So I think I agree with you in terms of the four point X being the main branch. That's just a renaming in my 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 mind. And that's where we do the work on the minor releases, 4.1 or 4.2. Well, it's always against the next version. So if you, you go into the continuous train model, um, you pick a date right now for two years in the future, uh, every six months. This is when the new version of Matic will come out, as in not the major one, but the minor one. Yeah. And be ready by then and get merged yeah. by then, and it will be in the new version. You're trying to steal my thunder from my keynote. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you did already, like like this. Um, yeah, but... we have already got a release cadence, so we do a minor release every three months. Bug fixes releases every month, um, major release once a year. But so what I understand, we would have four point X as the main branch. We would have, I think, it would be helpful to have a four point one point X branch and a four point two point X branch, but not created all at once. So when we release 4.0, we create a 4.0.x, and that's where we do all of our patch releases. And then when yeah. we release 4.1, that gets merged into the main branch, 4.x, and we create a 4.1.x branch, which is where we do all the patch releases for 4.1. We don't need a branch for those patch releases because we tag those. So And anything that goes into those releases will just end up being merged into that branch anyway the only issue we have is if someone makes a pull request when we're working on 4.0.1 and that doesn't get merged until 4.2 they've got to rebase it against the 4.2 branch so that's the only that's issue a, that we've the, had that's the open question eh? do you want to go into that complexity today mm -hmm. um do you have enough traction to uh, sustain such a model and like, mm. you don't want to disrupt or discourage people from like contributing um, by a complex contributing model like 4.1.x and also have a 4.2.x open and making it quite complex to not know what mm. to create your pull request against. I would not have a 4.1.x and a 4.2.x open at the same time because we, okay. I don't think we need to do that. I think we would, we also don't backport fixes to old minor releases. So as soon as 4.2 is released, 4.1 is no longer used. It's no longer supported or updated. 4.2 is, is what people use. But that maybe I'm, I'm just confused ever. What's the purpose of having a 4.1.x branch instead of a 4.x branch if you're not going back in time anyway? Because if we don't have a branch where we can be working on a major, a minor release and a patch release independently to each other. If it's all going in the same branch, you can't do that because you've got PRs that are features and PRs that are bugs, and we only do bugs in the patch releases. So you have to be able to independently manage the PRs and the code that comes in for bug fixes to only go into patch releases. That is if you um, want uh, the feature pull request, if you don't trust the feature pull request to be fully ready yet, but you still want to merge them. No, well, features are only mergeable in a minor release. So if you've got a feature PR that's ready to go, but you're still doing bug fix releases, Okay. At the moment, we just merge it because we can merge it to features and that doesn't affect the bug fix releases. You see what I mean? So the way that I see what you're explaining is that the 4.x branch would be where we're working on the next uh, patch release. Uh, the next uh, minor releases is always in the uh, 4.x and the and bug fix releases would be in the numbered branches. Maybe just for workflow purposes, so if, if that's the case, and someone files a bug against 4.2.x, which is the next 
um, not major, but uh, the 4.1 is now in uh, minor release, uh, whatever cadence. Yeah. Who is responsible for backporting or merging that same patch also into the older version or in the 4.1 branch? We don't merge any patch releases back. So as soon as we release the minors and patch releases, that is the latest version. We don't push those back into older minor releases. But it's we do branch. push those changes up into the main branch currently features. The, the release lead, once they've done the release, merges the branch for the minor or patch release back into features. So which branch should someone then file the bug against? That's the 4.1.x branch if yeah. the mod 4 gets released. Yeah, so say we're on 4.1 and the next release is 4.1.1, for example. They would go to the 4.1.x branch and make their bug fix PR there. And that would be merged in 4.1.x and tagged into the release for when we make 4.1.1. And then when that release is made, all of the stuff from that branch is then merged back to features. So that features is where you're working on the minor release, but it's also up to date with the patch releases. But in a world where a feature doesn't exist, I mean. It would be 4.x. So that would the name be 4.x. So um, all you're talking about is let's rename features to 4.x. Well, so I was like thinking of a scenario where how do you pick um, 4.0.x and 4.1.x, but not 4.x? As in, I don't think it makes sense to um, have a branch that doesn't follow the, the tree numbers. Mm -hmm. So if you choose um, either 4.x, you cannot have minor releases. So that's not really an option. Um, I think Motic wants to go with 4.1.1 at a certain point and 4.1.2, etc. That's, that's for the, fix releases, that's the yeah. bug fixes. Um, and at a certain point, really it's multi 4.2 and have a place where new features that are introduced in multi 4.2 are available. So then that range would be multi 4.2.x. Yeah. Is that what you think, Rahul? Uh, yes. Uh, this is, this is uh, similar to the Drupal, right, Nick? I think so, yeah. So yeah. there's no 4.x branch in that sense, or the features branch would actually always be the new major, well, yeah, major version, but not the major 4, eh? so 4. Dot, and then the new version. That's where actually all the pull requests go to. Yes. And if that bug is also uh, applicable to the previous version, it needs to be also merged back into the previous version, but first it actually applies to the new version. Yeah, so backward compatibility will be there. Uh, like uh, the way we are moving ahead with the comp uh, composer uh, support, uh, 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 the Nick, uh, Nick is saying uh, same thing that uh, will help uh, people uh, who have uh, done CI CD setup uh, with uh, using uh, Composer. So, like uh, every new uh, patch, uh, if there is a, a minor patch in uh, uh, the uh, current uh, bug fix branch, that should go into uh, the minus one uh, a branch that we have uh, released in the last uh, cycle. So. Uh, that way, uh, like uh, the code span and the compat compatibility will be uh, there, uh, and uh, we will uh, like uh, sustain that model as well. Like uh, like having composer plus having uh, this sort of feature release and uh, bug fixes releases uh, on a like a regular cycle and intervals. And the tricky parts, and that's something that I, I think right now, I don't know how that works if a bug is fixed that was found now in, in the features branch, but Motic tree is still supported. Somehow it gets backported, no? No, so Mautic 3, well, Mautic 3, as soon as we release 4, Mautic 3 has security only support for six months and then no support. So if we have a security issue, which we actually had this with the 2 to 3 update, we had a security, the big security issue, and that was related to two and three. So that did get pushed to both of them. But yeah. outside of that six months, it wouldn't. 
And also, once we've made a minor release, we don't actually backport anything to 3.1 if we're at 3.2. If we're at 3.3, we don't backport anything to 3.2 or 1 because people should be using 3.3. They shouldn't be using the outdated versions anymore. Right, but in, in the case of 4.0 is the stable one and you're working on 4.1, the bug fix actually goes first in 4.1 and gets backported to 4.0 and 4.0.1 gets released with that bug. No, that's not how we do it. If, you're, if we've released 4.0, any bug fixes go into 4.0.1, 4.0.2. Yeah. They wouldn't be merged into 4.1 and then come back. They would be would merged into them. the bug fixes. Because one or 4.0.1 and 2 would be merged up into 4.1. Yeah. So it's like the opposite of what you're saying. Yeah, to me, that's a little strange. Uh, that's not a flow that I'm accustomed to. Um, well, bug fixes can only be pushed, it can only be released in a patch release. So yep, they're also uh, a bug in the new version. Which hasn't been released yet. But that's the latest version of the code, so um, it should be actually applied in the both. I mean, probably doesn't even matter which one goes first, as long as both of them apply and the bug is fixed in both branches. But it depends what you mean by it's the latest version of the code, because the latest version of the code that we're working on at the moment could be the patch release or could be the minor release. They're two different code bases. Well, it's, it's actually always the minor release. But the bug fix goes back one version. Yeah. So you always work yeah. on if 4.0 is released, you always work on 4.1. If suddenly the pull request is a bug and it's typed bug, um, it should be applied first to 4.1, which is the new yeah. version that is not released yet, and then backported to 4.0 because your support cycle is not over yet for that version. So that's probably where this difficulty is because that's not how we've been working at all. Yeah. So if you find a bug, you make the bug against the the three point two point the three point two branch now, and then we would release the three point two point one from the three point two branch, and then we start working on the three point two point two release. And then we make that release from the 3.2 branch. And then when we start, then we merge, every time we make those releases, we merge that up into the next minor. So we're yes. not actually working in the minor and pushing it back to a, a bug version. Because if you did that, how would you only push back the bugs? Do you mean you have to make two separate PRs? Yeah, or you do a cherry pick uh, and make a new PR from that cherry pick. And if there's a conflict, it, that's the, the thing. Eh? Who is responsible for solving the conflict between the two branches? Yeah. If you make the release owner responsible, it adds a lot of work and um, yeah, stress on that person. Mm -hmm. While the person that actually created the bug fix should be responsible for backporting that to the current yeah. stable version. Um, but what you never want is that somehow there's a conflict and the bug fix is not available in the latest version and somehow it gets missed and the new version of Matic doesn't have a bug fix. But that could never happen right now because the bug fix will be in the minor re in the patch release, which will be merged up into the minor before that's released. Yes, so that's where the tricky part it happens. It gets so, merged uh, up, but it could be a conflict. And then yeah. who is responsible for solving that conflict? Somehow that the person that solves the bug uh, in 4.1, sorry, 4.0, yeah. um, fine, it's merged and I'm out of here. Yeah. And then suddenly there's a merge conflict. So who do you add the stress to? And that's the release manager. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so Nick, uh, but that, that, that basic, uh, basically is, uh, uh, like the responsibility of the developer who did that changes, right? So, uh, like mm -hmm. he has to uh, resolve that conflicts because, uh, uh, like, uh, the review cycle or uh, the PR is not getting a get a get reviewed or tested by community. That's why uh, that a PR being missed, right? Yeah. So yes, and, and I'm not sure how like 
GitHub or any of these workflow tools like allow you to make a pull request against two branches at the same time? They don't. No, you have to make not. two PRs, which is double yeah. work. Yes, and, and that's, I think, the problem space. Huh? You don't want to make it too complex for someone to contribute, um, yeah. but you do want to have the flexibility to have minor releases and major releases. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but, but uh, like uh, uh, the way we are uh, discussing about uh, branch name, so uh, like uh, if we want to uh, rename a feature branch uh, with 4.0.x, uh, so uh, uh, like uh, from that change onward, we will be supporting uh, x as in uh, patches right so mm -hmm. if that we're gonna uh, merge that will be merged into 4.0.x and uh, say suppose we are we have like a one month window or three month window once that window is uh, done so whatever the patches that we have merged that will be released that uh, uh, that will be pushed to 4.1.x right and then the new changes will happen and uh, if there is a PR which missed merge uh, or uh, missed uh, the uh, window of one month, say, uh, so uh, we just need to rebase so that like uh, uh, the developer should not uh, should not do uh, much of the complex work like uh, resolving co conflicts and stuff because that never gonna happen because uh, uh, he will have everything uh, from 4.0.x. So uh, there will be uh, there will be changes if uh, multiple changes are being done uh, in the patched or uh, updated code in that PR. So uh, that will, uh, uh, in my opinion, uh, that will never occur because uh, we anyways gonna let people know uh, or the Git or uh, Git admin uh, should let people know like once the uh, release is done, uh, we whatever the open PR, those PR should be uh, uh, basically, I don't know whether there is a bot or not, but uh, that that can just uh, change the destination uh, uh, to the latest one. Mm -hmm. That can be done. Yeah, that's the challenge we had with the Mortic 2 to Mortic 3, mm -hmm. right? Because it was such a huge uh, change and we had so many open PRs we had to go through and manually rebase all of those pull requests yeah. from two to three um, and decide whether we were going to keep the pull requests open. It's not such an issue if you're going, if you've got a PR that's been raised for a patch branch and you're then moving to another patch or another minor, but in between major releases, it can be a real pain, you know, a real pain. And and the pain is on the developer who wrote that PR because we do go back to them and say there's a conflict to resolve. Could you address the conflict? But I don't yeah. think that will be any different with the structure you're proposing because you still have that issue. Um, well, yeah, or you could call it the main branch, which is the, the more standard name for something that doesn't have a version. Um, and then you can still decide now it's time for Mautic 5 and all the pull requests are actually against the main branch. That mm -hmm. does mean it, and it has the same consequence. Eh? Um, if it's a bug for a minor version, it's up to uh, the person to merge that back into the minor version. Um, but actually it goes first into the latest version that is not released yet. Mm. Uh, so Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. Because uh, right now we have the same, eh? the features branch, also bugs go into the features branch first, no? No. Bugs are always merged into a 3.x branch. And like then- 3.2, 3.3. Always. And then merge into features, yeah. And then when the bug fix release is made, it's merged up into features. So if someone raises a PR and it's a bug and they've made it against features, we ask them to rebase it into the relevant minor patch that release that we're working on. Because that's where it's going to get merged. And then when we do the release on that branch, it's then the PR is made after the release to to push that up into the features branch. And you were saying who deals with the conflict the release lead would be the person who makes that pr it doesn't mean they're the person who has to address the conflicts they make the pr and then in the community we have to address those conflicts 
curious how Symphony, for example, does this, or I just take a look at other places. Yeah. So they have a main branch, and then the only other thing that they have. Let me see. Hi, Rami. I just noticed that you joined. So if you have anything you'd like to contribute to this discussion about branching strategy, then please do jump in. Thank you a lot. Thanks, thanks a lot. And actually, um, I, I don't know what you guys are talking about, but I'm interested to um, learn more actually about uh, Multic. So um, I've been using Multic for like two months, now, three months. Um, we, and I mean me, uh, as a marketing manager, we advise. I don't know, have you ever heard of Big Blue Button? Uh, it's a question. <laughs> have, you, have you heard of Big Blue Button? Big I'm not sure how to answer, answer this. Um, you're very welcome. Um, but this um, channel was about um, deciding on branch strategies, and that was the topic of uh, this hour. Um, oh, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> it doesn't, okay you're very welcome to, to discuss uh, that topic, but I think it would be good if we can stay on that topic for that remaining part of the hour. For sure. Okay, I understand. <laughs> well, I just wanted to introduce myself first, if that's why. So, um, moving on to your question. Um, actually, um, I, I mean, it, it's, it's in the theme of the uh, strategies. Um, in, in your, in multi templates, I think it's very li limited. So, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Okay, um, yeah because but I, this I, I, I mean, I've been having many problems uh, in in uh, modifying uh, the, I mean, the customizing the templates. Can I interrupt you for a second, Rami? Um, but yes. uh, that's not the the subject of of this hour. Um, I'm very happy to discuss that with you, but most likely in a different format or in a different time frame. Sure. I I would suggest that you could hop into the networking area because there's probably some people over there who'd be able to discuss that with you. Um, but at the moment, we need to be talking about how we're managing things on GitHub. So. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry if I interrupted. Uh, I didn't know you. I didn't know you. I'm sorry talking about strategies. Don't worry. Um, yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for your, um, for your assistance. And yeah, have a good one. Now we go to the uh, networking section. Okay. Okay. okay enjoy. <laughs> have a good one, guys. Bye bye. Um. So maybe to just take a look at how other projects do that. I think that's also what Dennis recommended us to do. Eh? Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is Symphony. They don't have a .x branch, okay. but they have um, this 5.3 and 5.4 branch, and they pick the default one. And I think that's also where pull requests are filed against. Yeah. And uh, they have a 6.0 branch, and most likely that's where new features go in. Yeah, because I can see on the side their latest stable release is 5.3.2. So 5.4 must be their next minor release and 6 must be their next major release. Yeah, so let me take a look and, for example, a bug report on what it is filed, filed against it. So, indeed, they have multiple ones yeah. uh, where, what is it, label, can I find that here somewhere, if it's a bug or not? Yeah, label, and then use bug. Okay. So in theory, everything should be filed against 5.3. Yeah, yeah. Or, the, or a minor release that it relates to. If it's supported. Mm -hmm. I suppose that. So if 5.2 or below is no longer supported, then that yeah. pull request is not valid, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think that kind of confirms um, what you were saying, um, and that indeed you have two branches open at the same time. Yeah. The only thing that should not be happening then is calling it .x, which yeah. for me that's fine. Huh? What do they call it? So they have their current minor version as the default branch, don't they? If you go well, back to the... Code. It was 5.4 as the default. So I think feature branch, um, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so, yes. so that's where features go in. But yeah, I, that's mm -hmm. their next minor release, isn't it? Yeah. Major? Or what? 
5.3 is the, the current version. Yeah, so 5.4 is their next minor release. Yes, yes. And that's and the that's, default yeah. branch. So that's sort of what we're doing with features. And if you features make a new pull our request. Next minor release. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, this is obviously it's not very easy to make a new one. I just wanted to see that template of what, how they guide. Oh, you can see that in the code. If you go into code, they might manage right. us at the organization level, but if you go to code and then look at .github. Ah, okay, yeah. And they'll have their um, post templates, the pull request template. There you go. Uh, that is a support question. That's not a feature request. Does it report? Is not here? Yeah, it's not where you were. Uh, yes. So that's indeed the same flow that you suggested. Mm -hmm. And I think for simplicity's sake, we should copy what Symphony has because that's the closest ancestor yeah. or relative that Motic has. Yes. Yeah. So um, the changes that would mean is that instead of calling <laughs> our default branch 5.4, uh, features, sorry, we would call it whatever our current minor release is. So that would now be 3.3. We're called zero. 3.3. And then we would have a branch ah, yeah. for our next major release. So 3.3 would be, and then when you release four, it would be 4.0 as the default branch, and then yeah. another branch for 4.1. Well, 4.0 would already exist today, and that's uh, the yeah. rename of the current features branch. It just it's not released because only tags are releases. Yeah. 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 Uh, so then um, you would have 4.0.0, which is yeah. v4.0.0, and that's the stable one. Yeah. 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 And 3.3 would be the development branch for Motic 3.3, and that's where yeah. bug fixes are uh, like filed against if it's still applicable to Motic 3 and Motic 3 is still supported. Yeah. Yes. Which I think makes and, sense. Yeah, so, but also if we were using this now, we would have a branch for 4.0, wouldn't we? If we were using this at this moment in time, 3.3 would be our default branch because that's our latest minor release. And then we would have 4.0 as a branch we're working on for the 4.0 release. Then when we yes. release 4.0, 4.0 will become the default branch. There'll be a 4.1 branch created. Yes. And we'll still be maintaining 3.3 as the... As long as you want to give months. either bug support or security support to that branch yeah. or to that, that version, yes. So we still have the same principle. Features go against the default branch. Whatever, mm -hmm. we don't name it. We just say the default branch is where you put fe features. And then we would have um, minor release branches and major release branches for bug fixes. Yeah. Or, or major releases. And, and purely from um, a working point of view, so you um, commit the, the bug fix to say 3.3 .3. yeah mm -hmm. who is responsible for moving that into four or so how would is, that work so this is where we'd have to establish some etiquette because we've done all the releases in the three series now there are no more releases in the three series so if someone finds a release a bug in the 3.3 .3 release we would tell them to make it against features because that's our next release we're not making another one in three so, so there's no more the patch release the in the tree version, yeah. Yeah, so like when you get to the end of that series, you have to be able to communicate to people, like stop making PRs against that branch, yeah, yeah. against the default branch, because that will be our next, there won't be any more releases here, basically. Maybe so, on a hypothetical level then, so imagine 4.0.0 is released, um, the 4.1 branch is open, someone files a bug request or a pull request with a bug fix to 4.0 because that's the active branch at that time. Who is responsible to backporting or forward port, if that's the right word, I don't even know if that's the right word, uh, that to the 4.1 branch. So 
currently what would happen is that when we make the next patch uh, release on the 4.0, so it'd be 4.0.1, that will be merged. When we do that release, that gets merged into the 4.1 branch and any other branches that are running, like the five branch, if there's a five branch. So, so that's not instantly. Currently, not instantly. So that's currently the job of the release manager to do that PR. Um, and that's never problematic? There are conflicts that have to be resolved. And so if yeah. I'm the release manager, I have to pull on someone else to help release, uh, help with that part because I can't resolve the conflicts myself. I don't have the technical knowledge to do that. So it's not without its faults. Mm -hmm. But I think it would be a lot more controversial to ask developers to make two or three pull requests. Yeah, no, that makes think, sense. You know? So I don't know if there's a way that it could be automated maybe with a GitHub action, that if someone makes a PR against a branch, it's automatically pushed to those branches. I haven't I haven't looked into that, but GitHub is GitHub Actions is quite magical. I'm sure it would do <laughs> I'm sure there's some way of doing it. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be useful if we um, just email the, the Symphony maintainers and yeah. uh, just their expertise and like, did it ever go wrong? Um, I think they do something similar. Um, I was looking at this pull request of a release with bug fixes, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I saw some PRs that were like merging 5.3 into 5.4, so they must do that, I think. Yeah. Yeah, most likely there's some automated process or, or something along that line that helps with that release indeed. Mm. So this is, yeah, no, that's not really the correct PR. Let me see. I think we need some more inside information on how they manage that. Yeah. In, in that I sense, Drupal is indeed a bit different. Uh, what did you say? Sorry. I said I can always reach out and ask what, okay. you know, what are the challenges we're thinking about moving towards the kind of strategy you have? Is there anything that doesn't work that well for you or any tools that you use that improve that process? Yeah, that, I think that would be useful um, in the short term. Uh, I don't see any issue in renaming these branches um, to then be compatible with all composer flow and semantic versioning. It doesn't really change anything. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. I think the main thing is communicating it out to developers and to the product and the core team. This is what we're thinking about doing. These are the reasons why this is how it yeah. would work. So people understand. We'll also have to update things like the contribution guides, the readme file anywhere we talk about developing with Mortic, um, because we will mention specific branch names, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. And luckily you can refer to the Symphony uh, application, I think, as the best yeah. example. Um, and it's very, yeah, very similar. Yeah. I, mean, I think it's feature parity in that terms. Uh, you would do exactly the same. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. Like, Any uh, thoughts well, yeah, I mean, uh, once we have three, uh, like, uh, Motic 3, uh, like, a uh, support in, like, once we uh, support, uh, like, we end, uh, we end the support for Motic 3, and uh, 4 is uh, started to gain momentum, then probably we might not have uh, the same sort of issues, like, uh, uh, making, making people, the developer raise multiple PR or resolve conflicts. So once uh, it is streamlined, uh, things will be uh, at a steady pace. Because like mm -hmm. uh, we are doing uh, like uh, bo both the major uh, versions, like three and four, uh, simultaneously. So once there is a uh, like uh, basically a major major release, then uh, this problem will occur uh, always. Yeah. Uh, like uh, you, the, the major will have kernel changes, right? So that's all yeah yeah when once we release four we will only be doing security fixes for three and only yeah. for six months yeah and there so, is no need to uh yeah. i mean uh, put uh, forward those changes uh, uh to four because like four will have those 
uh, taken care as well. Yeah. And this whole process is much easier when you're not in the when you're not dealing with a new mi major release that's coming up. It gets it gets more clunky and confusing as you're in that process where you're finishing one version and moving on to the next. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So we've got ten minutes left. What should we do as next steps? I think the simplest thing. Um, is to make a proposal document with the changes um, and maybe even create a PR, but that only for the .github folder because it, it needs to change some wordings and that's kind of the documentation already in there. So that's like a, a two-in-one um, optimization that is still a, kind of a proposal thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to me, that would make sense. And if that gets committed, only then you rename the branch to 4.0 and, and the whole uh, strategy yeah. goes in place. Yeah. So I think it would be good to write it up on Confluence, uh, maybe under the product teams page. I'm pretty sure they have a space on there for the product team. Is, there, is someone able to do that? I've got, I'm recording the audio for this, so um, we can share that if you need to listen back. But would someone be up from writing that up? Um, I'm happy to do so, but maybe uh, well, I could use some help. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll patch in then. If you want, do it in a Google Doc and then copy paste it into Confluence, because then you can work collaboratively in a Google Doc. And yeah, yeah. If you could give like the the first uh, draft, um, that would be great, and then mm -hmm. together we can uh, refine it. Okay. If if that works for you, eh? Uh, well, yeah, sure. Awesome. Wonderful. Positive I think then we'll also be happy with this uh, decision yes. that we are as close as possible to Symphony. Yeah, 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 I think so. I think that's, I mean, it was a bit chaotic in the past because we just didn't really have any formal structure. Um, so I think, I think, you know, we've made one step and now we're making another step. To yeah, get that's to, good. So... Yeah, cool. And I can. Hi, take Nico, by the way. Well. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Hi, Nico. Yeah, I can take an action to follow up with the Symphony project and see if they have any suggestions or if there's anything in their process of doing that that they find clunky that doesn't work so well. So, yeah, I'm mainly curious about the the two branch uh, strategies and and the forward porting thing. Um, yeah, yeah. If that like doesn't add too much strain to the release manager, but maybe. Yeah. It's the best of both worlds, and that's the the only option that was left could be. Yeah. Okay. 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 Awesome. I'm getting, uh, out in the sun and uh, going to watch the Belgian football uh, game. Oh, enjoy, enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I have a keynote to do, unfortunately. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> chained to my desk for the entire yeah. day. All right, Good have a lovely day, that. folks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.